So thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about how we can um, add helpers to GoGuardian and just kind of going over some of the um, ways to set that up, what that looks like, what that looks like on your end as um, either the teacher or the pair going into a class and just kind of going over all the details of that. So that's what we're going to be covering today. And then time, um, depending on time, we might get into some of the um, the details of GoGuardian, some of the tools and stuff, but it'll, that'll all just kind of be um, permitted on how much time we got going, so. All right, so we just want to introduce ourselves. I'm Satara Ali, your ed tech coach. And uh, my name is Marshall Byer and I'm the coordinator of educational technology. Our contact info and stuff is there, so if you, um, ever need to get in a hold of us, that information's there. You guys have a um, copy of the the slide deck and stuff, so all that stuff is um, there for you. Oh, do you need me to go back or no? No, my extension's incorrect. My extension on my post-it is, is 2808. 28, yeah. 2808, not 21. I don't know my own number. I apologize. <laughs> I will call myself more often so that I know it better. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll make sure that we update it on here as well. Yeah, we'll update it on the slides. And then um, speaking of the, the contact info that the each of us have a Calendly link. So if you wanted to schedule time with us, that's probably the best way to do it because you can go in, you can click that link. It's connected to our calendars. So then you can pick a time that it knows that we're available and you're available and then we can schedule time that way. So um, that's probably right now, that's probably the best way if you were wanting to schedule a call or a virtual meeting or um, any type of um, thing like that, that's probably the best way to do so right now. Okay, so our agenda for today, we're gonna go over just using GoGuardian. We're gonna go over creating a new GoGuardian class and then adding a helper and co-teacher to your clever GoGuardian class that's in there. And then also a custom created GoGuardian class. And then we're gonna go over para clever accounts, which is extremely important for them to get access to GoGuardian. Yep. Okay, so first of all, um, we just want to kind of quickly cover what GoGuardian is. Um, I know a lot of people, especially this year, have been using it, but um, just want to give a quick overview of what it is. It allows us as the teacher to see our students' screens, see what they're working on, um, and it works on their district Chromebook. And it helps us manage digital learning. It helps us um, keep our students focused on the task at hand, helps us keep them safe when they're using their device. Um, it's more than just watching their screen. Like you can do so much with it. You can push out websites to them. You can mute their screen so you can turn their screen off. You can chat, you can, you know, if you want them to only be able to open two tabs, Google Classroom and for example, Zern, you can lock it down where those are the only two tabs that they can open. So you kind of have some control as a teacher. So it's a, it's a, a really great tool in the situation that we're in right now. But even once we get back to students being in class physically, it's a great tool to have to help us manage them when they are on their um, district devices. So in case you just haven't seen or used GoGuardian a lot, this is kind of what it looks like. So the picture with the raccoon, that's what it looks like in the live view. And the other picture is more of when you're looking at the recordings of it. So you can just see what all of your students are doing. So you can, and there's a lot of different features about it. And we're excited to be able to take this to the next level to open it up to our paras as well. So just to kind of give you an overview here of um, the different permissions and the different roles that each person would have. So us as the teacher, we would be the owner. And so, or excuse me, the teacher. So the owner has all these permissions. So they can edit the class info, they can archive the class, they can add and remove teachers, they can add and remove students, they can start a session, they can end a session, they can send commands, they can 
toggle on chat, they can do all those things. Um, when we are kind of referring to us as teachers, we have most of those tools except for editing the class info, archiving the class, adding and removing teachers, um, especially because ours is synced through Clever. So that's why um, it's all done through that sync. So that's why we don't have editing the class info, those types of things. And then when we are when we would be adding our paras, that's you would be, and we're going to get into this, but you'd be adding them as a helper. So that's a role that you can add them on in um, GoGuardian. And so they're able to view the active session that's going on. They're able to end a session. So they can't start a session, but they can end a session. Um, they can send commands. They can toggle the teacher chat and then they can apply scenes or change scenes. And we'll get into those um, later on as well. So we're now gonna get into how to access GoGuardian and set it all up. So the very first thing that you would do along with your paras is they would go to Clever and they would click teacher login. Your paras would also click teacher login. Your paras should have also requested a Clever account a Google form went around to all the sites where paras, SLPs, everybody when authentication came around where everyone needed a Clever account to get past the authentication barrier. The only way we can get GoGuardian up and running for our paras is to make sure they have a Clever account. So if they do not, definitely email Marshall and me. Please email both of us. That way you get a response from one of us and we'll get everything connected for your paras. Once you get, oh yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, once they get that Clever account, they're logged in, um, they're gonna scroll down until they see this GoGuardian um, icon in there. There potentially could be two. I'm pretty sure we got the other one removed, but if not, it's this, it's the, the there's a white one and then there's one that's kind of like a blue gray that I'm pretty sure we, we hid, but if not, it's that particular icon. So they're gonna click on that GoGuardian icon to be able to access their account. Because like we said earlier, um, it's all done through Clever. So um, that's how they're going to be accessing GoGuardian. And then when you first log in, if it's your very first time, you're gonna have to agree to terms of service and you have to agree, agree twice. So you're gonna scroll all the way down, check the box, hit accept scroll all the way down again, check the box, hit accept. The reason why we're going over this, most of you have used GoGuardian, but you might have to walk the, you might have to walk your paras or any other staff through this process as well. So you have to scroll down twice because when you do it the first time, you're like, I already did it. And it's even more things you're agreeing to. All right, so once you are in, okay, you will see your class is in there. And since we have the Clever Sync going, um, if you haven't used it before, you'll have a pending section and those classes that are being synced over through Clever will be in the pending section. You can accept those classes and then they'll go into your active sessions. You also can create custom classes. So classes that are outside of the Clever Sync. So you can create your own kind of groups or your own classes if you wanted to. And so you can, like I said, you can create a custom class for your staff, or you can add staff that's already been um, in that Clever Synced created class. So you can add your pairs to either the Clever Synced class or just a custom class that you made. This is a recent update that GoGuardian just put out. So previously, what would have happened is you would have added them to the Clever Sync class and then every night when it syncs, it would kick them out because they're not part of that Clever Sync. But now they've updated that where now if you add them to your Clever Synced class, they will stay as a helper in that class. So those are two ways that you can um, add your helpers to your GoGuardian classes. So when we go through this process of creating a custom class, like Marshall said, you can add a helper, a co-teacher to the classes that are already in there. So when you first logged in to GoGuardian, you should have seen all your classes under pending. When you accepted all of them, they go into your active. So you can add a helper to those or you can create a custom class. Creating a custom class is pretty straightforward, but it's an amazing thing to do. 
I would definitely suggest creating custom classes. And the reason why is because you can choose what students go into those classes. So you can create groups. If you already have groups of students that work with different paras, or if you have groups of students that are just together that you'd like to monitor during different activities, or even if you're, you have a group during lunch or a group during tutoring that you are always working with or your intervention group or ELD group, you can create those custom classes within GoGuardian. And within those custom classes, you can be the owner of that. And then you can also add your para as a teacher or as a helper. And then that gives them all those different permissions to be able to help you manage those students. And then for that para to help with that child as well. So if you're a secondary teacher, like I was a secondary teacher and some of my students that I have throughout the day, they had a one-on-one -on -one para. What all the secondary teachers would need to do for that student and for that para is they would need to create a custom class with just that one kid and that one para. That way that para is able to interact with that student and guide that student all day long in first period, second period, third period, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. That's the best way to provide support for that kid. And as a teacher, it does not take away my ability to see that kid. So if I have that child in my fourth period class, I can still see that child's screen on my GoGuardian. I can still apply scenes as well. The only thing I'm giving my helper the ability to do is to close tabs, to guide, to see, to watch. And I mean, we all know in this distance learning, we need to see the kids' screens in order to help them. So anything we can do just to have more people help us is definitely needed. So creating a custom class, there's just six steps. You would just click on the Add Classroom button, which is on the home page. Then you would enter the name for your classroom, but this can be anything you want. So these would be the names that you would see, but this name is also the name that your para would see. If you are going to cre be creating many custom classes, the only thing I don't want you to do is don't put the name of your class, the full name of your student. So you can put the first name, last initial, but please don't put the last name. And then you would just select a subject from the drop down menu. Unfortunately, you have to put a subject in there, but I think other is a choice. Mm -hmm. You can add a description that's optional. You can choose a color for the class. It's just to help with organization. And then you add the classroom. And after you do that, all you have to do is add your students. And there's a few easy steps that we'll go over in a little bit on how you can add your students. So after you get your class all set up, um, how you would be able to either add a co-teacher or add your helper is you're going to click on your class tile and then there's going to be an option on the left-hand side there that says teacher. And then you're gonna click on add teacher and then you're going to search for uh, your pair's name uh, or you can search by their uh, email address. And what we did was we went through and we manually uploaded all the paras who have clever accounts. We uploaded their email addresses and their names in there. So they're in GoGuardian. So if for some reason you're searching for your para and they don't show up, let us know and we can double check that for you. And then um, it could easily be that they didn't have the clever accounts because that's how we got the email addresses to be able to add them to GoGuardian. So, um, you should be able to click on teacher, click on add teacher, type in either their name or their email address, and then you would choose as their role, you would choose a helper, and then you would add them as a teacher to your GoGuardian, and then they are able to be a helper in that specific GoGuardian class. And then to remove a teacher or a helper, so let's say like things are always changing, someone goes on maternity leave, someone's sick, or you get a sub. To remove a helper, it's almost the same thing. So you would just select the class and you'd click on the teachers tab. And when you click on the teachers tab, you can see who's in there. And then you would find that user that you need to remove and you can right click on their on the name and their role. And then you would click remove teacher and a confirmation would pop up. You click remove teacher, it's a big red button. Um, that way you don't accidentally hit it and then they're removed and it's all instantaneous. So once you remove them, even if they're in a session, it removes them automatically. 
or if you add them, they will be added automatically. So they can be at their Chromebook and you can be at your desktop and you can add them. And within 10 seconds, they can log in and start us. Well, you would start the session, but they can log into that currently started session and get everything going. So adding students to your custom class um, is kind of similar. So students automatically get added to your Clever synced class because it pulls from your roster in Clever. But if you created a custom class, you have to add them yourself. So in the student section, you're going to click on add students and then you have some options. So you would more likely than not probably click the email option and then you can type in the student's email to create a custom class with those custom or with those students in that class. The other options that they have is more like if we're if they're in person, but because um, you can give them like a code and you can do those types of things, but that won't be very helpful if they're not in the classroom with you. And so that was just creating a new classroom with a helper. It's that simple. And we wanted to go over some of these terms that GoGuardian uses a lot. Schedule. This is to set up a repeating or reoccurring time that GoGuardian will automatically start recording. If you create a custom class and you're adding your helpers to that class, I 100% suggest that you schedule the sessions to when it will start recording and stop, start and stop just because when you're adding your paras as a helper they can't start that session only teachers can and that's on purpose um, just due to certification reasons and being able to like see a student's device so if you just schedule all of those sessions to start just like you're scheduling your normal sessions and i can share my screen in a little bit and show you guys how to get to all of that but when you schedule it you can put a start and stop time some teachers are doing 8 to 3 p.m. Some, and that's, you know, elementary. And then secondary, they're putting in the exact times, 8.16 to 8.47 for their first period or second period. So you're able to schedule the exact times that you need for your GoGuardian session to run, which also means that if you're going to be absent one day or you're sick one day, you don't have to worry at all about if you're sessions running or going into go guardian and starting it for your para because it's already set and it's already active and then if you needed to go back and look at a recording it's also there and so sessions that's just what go guardian uses as a way to talk about past or present recordings so the session that's just what's happening right now and then a scene that's just the filtering window and that's important for us to talk about right now in regards to let's say I've got a student and Marshall's my para and so I've got a student who I created a custom class for and Marshall is that students one on one so they're together in that class. I am putting a scene on my students which means I'm filtering I am blocking YouTube for everybody. That means that that student that Marshall is with also has YouTube blocked. So my scene applies to everybody or if I take that scene away that scene also gets taken away from that student and that Marshall's also with. So I can have a kid in multiple Go Guardians with multiple teachers, with multiple helpers at the same time, but that also means that anything that we do also applies to everybody. So if Christina had was that teacher, so me and Christina have kids and we're both watching that kid at the same time, we're both teachers, and so we apply a scene. She applies a scene to block Google. And I wanted these kids to go on Google. Well, she's now blocked them. And so my, they can't go on there. And if I'm applying a scene that I want Google to open, because a scene can block things, but a scene can also open them, it won't open for my kids. So it's really, really important, especially when we start creating all these custom classrooms and adding kids everywhere, it's really important to have that open communication and make sure that you're ending your sessions. Because if you're applying a scene, say I'm applying a scene to block YouTube and Christina's like, oh, I wanted YouTube for my kids. 
if I would have just ended my session, that automatically releases that scene that I've put over on everybody. And then there was a question on, can sessions be scheduled for different times on different days? Yes, it can. It can all be created and I'll show you guys that. You can do it multiple times throughout the day, but you can only schedule them Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's the window, just because those are school hours. We don't record or see anything outside of school, but you can definitely do all of that. And then if there's another question about the chat, so if my para has a Chromebook, will using GoGuardian be limited for them? No, they can still do everything on the Chromebook, the same with GoGuardian. And then if Marshall's a student and Marshall's in my class as in GoGuardian and Christina's class in GoGuardian, I can chat with him and Christina can chat and the student can toggle between both chats. So we can have a student in multiple GoGuardians chatting with multiple teachers all at the same time. And so it's, our students are amazing at being able to chat with all of us, right? Nonstop. Um, so they can definitely, you know, they'll get through it. But just wanted to point that out that it's this new thing that GoGuardian did now that allows multiple teachers to control multiple students or the same student. All right. So now we're going to get into scheduling our classes or creating a schedule. So you're going to log into GoGuardian, you're going to go to your active classes, and then on each class there's going to be the little settings wheel there. If you click on that settings wheel, you're going to have three tabs at the top. There's going to be info, scheduling, and reporting. So you're going to want to go to scheduling, and then there's going to be a green button that says add a schedule, and you're going to click there to add your schedule. And then after you click on adding the schedule, now here's where you can pick your times. So you can have your start time and you can set your end time. You can set what days of the week um, it'll run. Obviously it won't run Saturday and Sunday because we don't have those days set and on the admin side to set to schedule, but you can schedule anything between Monday and, Monday and Friday between like Satara said, between 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. So um, once you have all those things set up, you just go ahead and click add schedule. And then, um, so the sessions, that's just accessing previous recordings, running log or starting a session right away. When you want to start anything right away, you would just click on that block that your class is. And then on the right hand side, there's going to be a button that says start session. If your session's already started at the very top of your window, you'll see a little tab that you can get to that'll have your session going. And those of you that have been actively using GoGuardian, it's something that we wish we had forever ago. And it's something we can't live without now that we have it. Um, but it's, it's an amazing tool for a lot of different things. Cause when Zoom fails, cause you know, Zoom has not worked certain days, we can do everything through GoGuardian. Because as you start exploring GoGuardian more, there's a part in GoGuardian where you can actually present yourself. So you're presenting yourself on all your students' devices. So that's a really nice feature of GoGuardian itself as well, because you can have that type of, it's essentially like one-way communication because you're only presenting yourself. You're not able to see your students like you can in Zoom, but it at least gives us that backup plan for when things aren't working. We can go and we can use GoGuardian and do that self-presentation where we're at least talking to the kids and we're still able to see their screens on our other monitor that we have and kind of guide them that way. And so then I, just, oh, oh, go. Ahead. No, go ahead. And once again, we just wanted to go over the different roles. So it's really important that you understand the difference between the helper, teacher, and the owner, because you can technically add your para as a teacher or a helper. Um, just look at what you want them to do and then what you would like them to do within your classes with the students. If you want to have them start the sessions, if you add them as a teacher, they would be able to. We just advise that you add them as helpers and that you set your sessions to schedule, to start and stop at a certain time, just because we don't wanna ever get into that sticky situation with parents or anything like that where uh, we're leaving a child unattended. So just set it 
those permissions as helpers, you can definitely add co-teachers. So if you're partnering with other teachers in your PLC, add everybody as a teacher. It's fabulous. You can do that. You can divide your students out. If you're still trying to share your students, I know when we all were together, we would send our students in different classrooms during different intervention time periods and our PLC members that were strongest in one set would help us out in something that I was weak in. And so we can create those groups again with GoGuardian and we can share our students again, just creating those custom classrooms and adding in those teachers. So GoGuardian gives us a lot more flexibility, especially in this distance learning age where we're all just trying to work together to get these kids to pay attention to us and to get them focused on their work. So now we're just going to kind of hit, which we've we've hit on a lot of this, but we just want to kind of go over it again. So why why would we add helpers to GoGuardian? So, like we said before, it allows a one-on-one -on -one pair to stay with a student. Um, if a teacher, uh, if all the teachers in, like if you're at secondary, if all the teachers in every period create custom GoGuardian classrooms and add that pair, that pair can just follow that student all day, just like they would if they were um, there with them in person. Um, the pairs can track students work when they're supporting them in groups and the pairs can also support the teacher with students so um, they can be there and they can kind of help with their student but then they can also just be an, an extra set of eyes um, for the teacher as well and so now we're going to go into clever accounts for our paras our paras have to have a clever account in order to access GoGuardian but I'm sure you've also found out if you turn on authentication, they've had to have clever accounts for that too. So in order for um, our, like why do our pairs need clever? Remember that if a teacher decides to turn on authentication through clever, a para resource specialist, SLP, or anyone coming to your classroom will need to have a clever account. If a teacher wants to add a staff member as a helper in GoGuardian, that staff member will also need a Clever account because we have GoGuardian linked to Clever. And so activating and signing into Clever for our pairs or SLPs or resource specialists. So once we know that they want the Clever account and they request a Clever account, um, they'll receive an activation email to their K-12 email address. Um, and the way they do that is we send out a Google form. If you know you have paras that need access, let us know. We can send them the link to the form and they can request the um, Clever account. And so if they haven't received, they filled out the form, but they haven't received um, their email address or they can't find it or they're not sure where it is, what they can do is they can go to Clever, so Clever slash in slash Turlock. Um, they can click on teacher login, enter their K-12 email address, and then um, enter the temporary password. We have it all set to just welcome one. So that's just kind of like the standard initial temporary password that we set. And so that should work. If for some reason those steps don't work, then they can email Satara and I and we can um, we can navigate them through that. But um, if they've never logged in before, it's gonna be set to that welcome one because that's what we have set for the um, initial temporary password. And sometimes when like their account doesn't work, it's definitely me because I have to type in their name and their password. And so I've put a period where it's, I mean, a comma where it's supposed to be a period or I forget a letter or I write an N where it's supposed to be an M. So probably me. <laughs> So just let me know. Yeah, but it's something we can easily just go in, fix it real quick, and then they'll, they'll have access. Okay, so not only will they be able to join your GoGuardian sessions, but they'll also be able to join any um, meetings you have. So whether they have Zoom or whether you have um, authentication turned on for Zoom or not, now there, there won't be any issue with them being able to join a session. So. Um, having that clever account is kind of the key to get them access to the things that you guys are doing with your students. And then I went in and I added that Google form link to the chat. And then also I added the Google form link to the um, 
slide presentation where we were talking about the Clever accounts. Perfect. And then someone asked, are we allowed to request accounts for student teachers? Um, the only way I can make a Clever account for a student teacher is if they have an Outlook email address, unfortunately, because all of our Clever accounts are through turlock.k12.ca.us. So if they're able to get that account, technically I can. Um, yeah, we can look. We can look into that. Yeah, for sure. So we just wanted to throw this in here as well. Just some common kind of questions that we get. So, can a student be in multiple sessions at the same time? And um, yes, they can. We talked about this earlier. So a student can be in multiple sessions at the same time. They can even, like we said, they can even chat with multiple teachers at once. They just have to toggle between the teachers that they're chatting with. Um, as long as, like we talked about before, as long as the scene doesn't affect the other students' work that another teacher is wanting them to do. So like Sitara said earlier, if I have a scene that I want to block YouTube and I have that scene running from eight to three, when my student goes to the next class, if that next teacher wants YouTube, since I applied the scene first, my scene's gonna override it. And so they won't have access. So we, that's why we wanna make sure that if our students are going anywhere, if they're going to another teacher, if they're exiting out for you know speech or whatever, that we have those scenes set appropriately. So a scene that we are setting isn't affecting something that they're doing with another group. Um, can teachers manage multiple sessions at the same time? Yes, they can. So we talked about this earlier as well. You can have multiple classrooms going at the same time. So a good example of this would be if you wanted to, like we said, if you wanted to divide your kids up into groups and you wanted to kind of differentiate, this is a great way to be able to do that. So you could have three sessions running and you can um, issue separate commands. So maybe one group you want um, to open tabs for them, but then you want to apply a scene to this group. So maybe with this group of kids, we know that you know they are a little more able to kind of manage things on their own. But then I know I have a couple of friends who need a little bit more direct <laughs> instruction and direct guidance. So I'm going to manage how many tabs this group can open because they need a little more, you know, assistance in that area. So um, we all have those kids who like to have 10 million tabs open. So, okay, you guys are going to be in this group and you guys are only going to open these tabs. But this group over here, I can give you a little more leeway. So, um, and that's just with your, you can just set those up with your kids. So you can have multiple classes going at the same time. Each class can have their own set of rules being added all, or being applied all at the same time. 